Hello, everyone. It's me again. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on Analog to Digital Conversion, which is also known as ADC. The objective of this video is going to describe what are the different terminologies that is used to describe the essential part of ADC. This will be the part two series discussion. The earlier on series discussion, part one of ADC, I have put the video link under the description. So please take a look on that particular video in order to understand fully on ADC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Let's start by describe the terminology to use to describe the process of analog to digital conversion. In fact, there are six important terminologies that you should know in order to fully understand the analog to digital conversion possession. Firstly, sampling frequency. Okay, I have described what is sampling frequency in an ADC. I have also do a quick case study based on low sampling rate and high sampling rate on the part one series discussion on ADC. This sampling rate basically determine whether are we able to fully capable to recover back the analog signal or not. I have also described the term number two, numbers of bit on the part one series discussion. This number of bit, in fact, determine the resolution. How good the resolution of this analog to digital conversion. This three, four, five, six is the new terminology that I'm going to describe on this video. Number three, what is the number of quantization level? In fact, this quantization level is closely related with the numbers of bit which I'm going to describe to you soon. Next will be on full-scale voltage, which is called VFS. This basically defines the dynamic range of the analog signal from the minimum all the way to the maximum. So this is full-scale voltage. Next, I'm going to describe to you what is quantization step size or resolution Q. Okay, this Q is also related with L and also the numbers of bits which I'm going to illustrate shortly. Last but not least, I'm going to describe what is the maximum possible quantization error. Okay, so over here, you will be able to understand this six topology in order to fully understand the process of analog to digital conversion. Let's do a very quick, what are all these six terminology? Firstly is sampling frequency, okay, which is also denoted as FS. Remember, under this Nyquist theorem, my sampling frequency need to be as, at least two times the maximum frequency. Okay, so this is the basic minimum requirement for sampling frequency. If I want to recover back the original analog signal, the number of sampling must be at least two times the F max. If not, enter sync error will actually occur. Okay, so this is the consequence. If I don't comply to this law, okay, aliasing error will occur. On the next video, I'm going to explain to you what is aliasing error. Number two, numbers of bits of an ADC. Okay, so basically they are described in terms of m bits per sample. Okay, on my previous video part one, I have mentioned also why this is actually essential. This actually represents the resolution of my analog signal. The numbers of bits that is used to represent the amplitude of the sample signal. Okay, so this is why this is also part of the essential discussion on ADC. In the previous example on my part one, okay, in fact, I do two examples. Okay, one is n is equals to one, another one is n is equals to three. Okay, so these are the two examples that I've done on the part one series discussion. Next, okay, we talk about numbers of quantization level L. Okay, when MP is used to represent a sample, 
it is possible to represent 2n level. Okay, which means that this quantization level L is equal to 2 to the power of n, where n is equal to numbers of bits. Remember, as I mentioned earlier on, during part 1, I have two cases of discussion. One is n is equal to 1, another one is n is equal to 3. n equals to 1, we rarely use to be to be upfront. Okay, so therefore, I prefer to use at least n is equal to 3. And when n is equal to 3, my quantization level is equal to 2 to the power of 3, which is 8 level, which means that I'm going to have 8 levels, which I'm going to describe later on. Next, here we talk about full-scale voltage. Okay, the full scale or maximum range for the analog signal is called VFS. Okay, in short, this voltage full scale actually describes the analog signal from the very minimum all the way to the maximum. So later on, I will use a diagram to describe what is voltage full swing. If the input signal is beyond the voltage full swing, the ADC is saturated. The signal is quantized into the maximum level and this led to distortion, okay, which means that if my analog signal is much bigger than this voltage full swing, the ADS will be saturated, okay, which means that they are not capable to represent the signal in a digital format anymore. And with this, this actually led to distortion. Number five, quantization step size or resolution. Okay, so remember I told you that this Q is closely related to L. Okay, the quantization level and also the numbers of bit. Okay, again, during the discussion later on, I will show it to you what is called the resolution Q here. Last but not least, in terms of quantization error, okay, so this is due to the quantization process. Each analog sample encoded by the ATC will have an amplitude uncertainty of plus minus 0.5 Q. Okay, which means that my maximum quantization error will be plus minus 0.5 Q, which I'm again going to describe later on. Let's start okay, by describe the first terminology, which is the sampling frequency. Okay, remember, in order to prevent aliasing error, okay, the sampling frequency should be at least two times my maximum frequency. Okay, for example, this is my analog signal that I want to convert into digital. So the first task I need to do is to do sampling. Remember this? So this basically represents the sampling point for this particular analog signal. And over here, okay, you can see that this TS, which is the time between the interval, between the sampling pulse, can you see here? So this is the time that is between the sampling pulse, okay, which which is actually, let's say for this case here, if we measure, which is one millisecond. So therefore, the sampling frequency is equal to one over one millisecond, which is equal to 1000 Hertz. This indicate that we have 1000 sample every second. So imagine every second, we will have 1000 sample happening. Okay, I can't draw 1000. Okay, but imagine that if let's say this is one second, we we're going to have 1000 sample for this case here. So hopefully this will let you understand what is sampling frequency. Next, okay, we talk about the numbers of bit. Okay, for example, for this case, okay, let's say that the numbers of bit is equals to three. Next, we talk about this number of quantization level L. So L is equals to two to the power of N, which is the numbers of bit. And as I mentioned earlier on, the numbers of bit, let's take it that is three. So two to the power of three is equals to eight. So this means that we are going to have eight level here. Can you see? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to have eight level to describe this analog signal. Okay, so this is the meaning why this number of bits is correlated with the numbers of quantization level. Next, let's describe what is full scale voltage. Okay, so full scale voltage. Okay, this is the analog signal. So basically, like I mentioned earlier on, this voltage full scale basically start from the very minimum point of the analog signal all the way to the maximum point. So basically, this quantified as voltage full scale. Next, 
Okay, we are going to describe what is quantization step size or resolution Q here. Okay, remember I told you that these are the X level, quantization level, and this is what we call the voltage boost skew. Okay, this Q in fact basically is the gap between from one level to another level. Okay, so this Q actually indicate the resolution. Okay, because it's measure the separation between one level to another level. You understand what I mean? So basically, this Q actually define the resolution. Okay, if this is smaller, we have a higher resolution. And this thing is bigger, then we have a lesser or maybe not so clear resolution. So it's always ideal to keep Q as small as possible so that we are going to have a higher resolution. Okay, remember this formula, which I have not explained to you earlier on. This is Q. How can we find the Q? Okay. Basically, this Q is basically, it's the same. You take a look from the extreme end. This is what we call a voltage full swing. Okay, so this is where we actually obtain the voltage full swing. And then if we want to calculate, okay, we have eight level, okay, which means that we have seven gaps here. Okay, so these are all the eight level lines here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And over here, we have seven gap. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. So over here, if we want to find the Q, what I need to do is basically I take this voltage to swing, okay, divided by L minus one. Okay, because the number of level is eight for this case here, and the gap is actually seven. So in fact, this formula is fixed. Okay, I take the numbers of level minus one, which give me how many gaps is in between the quantization level. Okay, so if I do this, I will be able to find my resolution, which is voltage full swing divided by L minus 1. Okay, so this is what I mean by quantization step size or resolution Q. Last but not least, let me describe what is quantization error. Okay, again, this is the Q factor. Okay, remember, this is the imaginary line. Okay, so I can either put either them into this point or this point. Okay, all this quantization or sampling, I cannot put them at the unit position. I can only indicate their position either on this line or that particular line. So therefore, I have this imaginary line. Anything that is lower than this imaginary line, I'll put them into the lower indication here. Anything that is higher, for example, this is higher than the imaginary line, I'll put this point at the higher quantization level. So with this, you can see that the maximum possible quantization error will be plus minus 0 0.5 Q. Okay, over here, for example, let's say it exactly at this point, but I have no choice. I need to put them at one to one particular stock. So therefore, for example, for this case here, I put them under this line. So the maximum quantization error will be 0 0.5 Q. Or if not, I have, oh, I have only to put them on the higher level here. Okay, so therefore, this actually what it means by quantization error. With this, i like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Bye for now.